Peru swore in the head of Congress as, as its president just a day after its former head of state was unexpectedly booted from the office. The Peruvian Congress overwhelmingly voted to impeach him over allegations of corruption. And joining us with more on this story from Lima is Bloomberg's John Quigley. Thank you for joining us, John. Pleasure to be here. Great. Well, before we get to the politics of it all, Peru is stuck into one of the world's deepest coronavirus-induced economic slumps. How does this affect the COVID fight and the recovery? Well, as you may know, Peru has had one of the worst uh, outbreaks of coronavirus uh, anywhere in the world this year. Um, but since August, the, the, the numbers have been looking more and more favorable. And, and that's had a, you know, a, a pretty good uh, effect on the economy, allowing reopening and letting businesses uh, plan for you know, getting, getting back to normal. So um, really, this, this uh, impeachment couldn't come in a, a worse time with uh, you know, the economy pulling out of, of one of the world's deepest uh, contractions in the second quarter and looking, for, you know, looking like a, a stronger recovery was, was, was taking hold in the third, third quarter. But obviously now businesses uh, and the country in general is just facing a lot of uncertainty. Now, the president's removal comes just five months before the next general election that's scheduled for April. What happens to that now? Is it still going to happen in April or what might happen? Well, the, the, the president, uh, the new president who was sworn in today as, a, as an interim leader for the next nine months, he's, he, uh, he was uh, clear from, from the start that, you know, the election date can't be moved um, and that he will hand over power in, in July next year as, as planned. And there's really going to be a lot of pressure on him to stick to that, that timetable. It's, it's a rather sensitive issue because no one wants to be in, in, in this situation in the first place with uh, and really wants a, a transition to a, you know, a the democratically elected government as, as soon as possible. OK, understood. Now, the new interim president will be the third president within a single five year term. That's a lot of change in a short amount of time. Do you see any stability on the horizon? Well, the the, the hope is that, that that election next year um, on, on April 11th is going to bring about some sort of stability. It depends on how much uh, uh, how, what sort of mandate um, the new leader has hopefully be a strong mandate with, you know, uh, a, a strong presence in Congress. But there's no, no guarantee that this kind of fragmentation with, a, a, you know, a, a divided or an opposition controlled Congress it isn't going to uh, be a problem for the next president, too. Now, just as we talked about not too long ago, Peru has since been among the country's worst hit by COVID-19 and the economy shrank 30 percent in the second quarter. Now, how do you see that practically in your daily life? How difficult is it for these, um, for the people in the lowest income groups? Well, you, you can see it, um, and, you, know, uh, you know, out on the street, there are, uh, uh, there are a lot of people asking uh, for money that weren't, weren't there, you know, six months ago. Um, businesses are closed. It's obviously a sign that you know there's uh, been a big loss of, of employment. There are a few new businesses opening, but um, you know they're obviously the the, the, the po increasing poverty rate uh, this year is is a big concern. John Quigley, thank you so much for that. We'll make sure we stay updated on that for you guys. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.